throughout thou, O great mountain. Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plague, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Shouts of Grace Center brings you pure and undiluted word of God from the impeccable throne of grace. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We ascribe all greatness to your name. We thank you for your presence that fills this place. And we know that every time you visit us with your presence, there's always a purpose. And we are asking, O oh Lord, that our purpose in your heart for us tonight will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because this presence and this glory that fills this place will touch our lives will change our lives will change things that needs to be changed in our lives in the name of jesus and bring us into that place where we are in total alignment to your will and your plans for our lives in jesus mighty name we pray and everybody shout hallelujah let's be seated thank you choir glory to Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You have to let him take over your life. Because you can't do it on your own. And it's a realization that you must get into as soon as you can. So that you invite him. You invite him into your life. And say, Lord, I, I need you to take over. I'm tired of my, I'm tired of myself. I'm tired of my energy. I want some divine energy. I'm tired of using my logic, my intellect. I submit. And I ask you to take over. Tonight I'm speaking on brokenness brokenness in the book of mark chapter 6 that that will be our text for tonight mark chapter 6 and um, i'll be reading verses 38 to 44 i want the media to be quick with this the book of mark chapter 6 and verse 38 to 44 he says unto them how many loaves have ye go and see and when they knew they said five and two fishes and he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass and they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fishes divided he among them all and they did all eat and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes and they did eat of the loaves and they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men because in the Bible in the scriptures women and children are not counted and so when you count their wives and their children you are looking at uh, between 20 and 25,000 people that were fed on that particular day go back to verse 38 let's begin from there and move on verse by verse it says unto them how many loaves have ye Go and see and when they knew they said five and two fishes the first thing i would like you to to see here is that jesus was calling the disciples into a place of awareness and he already knew how many loaves were there or how many fishes were there because god 
Jesus knows everything and anything. He knows everything that is going on by word of knowledge, by word of wisdom, by the signing of spirit. He knows. But I believe he was asking them deliberately to teach us something. He says unto them, how many loaves have you? And then he told them, because probably the disciples will have looked around and do something like this. No loaves here. No fishes here. Then he said, go and see. Go and see. Every major blessing and increase begins with you going into yourself to go and see all right this scene is not external it is more of internal go and see oh here i am i, I don't even know what i'm gonna do i don't have anything go and see the disciples must have looked at jesus like where do you expect to see fishes and loaves in this place go and see how am i gonna start this business go and see how am I going to step out and, and just get married like that? Go and see. How am I going to step into the ministry just like that? Go and see. Oh, I don't have money for this. I don't have money for that. I did, did, did. Go and see. And the problem is, while you are going to see, there may be distractions. And when there's distraction, well, this is what the devil does when you make up your mind to go and see and check out and focus and concentrate then it brings distractions and when you are taking away the distractions you get busy with distractions and leave the real thing are you are you with me here i saw something flying all over social media and i just i just love i don't know where it originated from but i saw people talking about tithing using logic logic doesn't work here these things are spiritually designed if you go by logic you will crash i can assure you tithing is a covenant it's not something you debate or argue and one of the things i saw in the arguments that were preferred was the fact that Malachi says, bring ye tithe that there may be meat in my house. So the argument was tithe is not for buying musical instruments or chairs or anything, it's for meat. In fact, the person wrote food instead of meat. But what the Bible says is that may be meat in my house. And so when you look at it logically, you tell yourself, oh, tithing is for buying food for pastor, for members, for everybody that is hungry. It is not for buying microphone or chairs or speakers. And it looks logical until you understand what meat is. You see, this is why you have concordance. You have strong concordance. And you look up the words and find out the original meaning before you go and embarrass yourself all over social media. And so, let me just answer that. There are so many things, but let me just answer that. Jesus Christ said, the disciples went somewhere, they came back, and they said, this guy must be hungry now. Let's get him food. In John chapter 4. And Jesus Christ said, no, 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 no. I have a greater meat. My meat is to do the will of my father. And the disciples were confused. Meat? Oh, he's talking about food. He said, did anybody give him food? And he began to talk about souls. He began to talk about uh, uh, liberals and few. Uh, let the Lord send for liberals to his harvest. In other words, the meat he was talking about there is the work of the ministry, as it were. Not food that you eat into your mouth. The disciples were entered with the same confusion. And they said, did anybody give him food? He said, you don't understand. He said, 
do you not say four months until harvest look at the fields it's ripe for harvest the laborers are few pray ye the lord of the harvest i will send for laborers this harvest so i was talking about the work of the ministry the meat in malachi is not food to eat it is the it is anything that has to do with souls does musical instrument microphone does it help attract souls oh yes that's meat there it's not food so these people wrote all kind of junks i nearly had headache because they are trying to at, attack the world from the logical point of view and it does not work like that it doesn't work like that the things of god are spiritually discerned and you see before you go on social media to embarrass yourself study the word study the word study it the Berean Christians they don't take the word for for taking sake they go back home and open the Bible and compare and study deeply before they make proclamations anybody that read Bible in little when he goes through all those things we just be laughing to himself because it's full of junks and this is also why you must be careful not to copy things on social media and be pasting it on your Facebook everywhere. You don't even know what the person is saying, but it appeals to you on the logic side. You don't do things like that. That's what Jesus Christ was telling them. Go and see. Go and see. Stop gallivanting about. Get inside and see. Study this thing. And get it right. Because what you know is what's going to work for you. Go and see. Focus. Stay in one place. Stop getting distracted. Because when you get distracted, you can't see nothing. You can't see nothing. And there are so many other arguments. I really don't have time tonight. Maybe one day I will, I will teach you on all those things. But they are just, all of them are just baseless. You see... There are some doctrines of the Bible. Don't, don't try to mess yourself with it. It's just doctrine. There's nothing you can do about it. You can argue back and forth, go back and forth. It's a waste of time. Are you following me here? So Jesus told them, go and see. That is, be detailed. Check out your life. Focus on your life. Go inside and check out. Check success is deliberate not you just nothing just happens in the message translation of mark 638 look at what it says he said but it was quite serious how many loaves of bread do you have take what take an inventory that didn't take long five they said plus two fish every point in time of your life you come into a place where you have to take inventory about your life are you following me you check your life because the bible talks about the fact that the truth of god's word slips away so easily i mean you can go into error at the click of the finger and we are in an age where all kind of nonsense are filling up your space on social media and everywhere People are no longer reading their Bible. They are reading social media. That's what they are reading. Social media is addictive. But it won't get you anywhere. God's word will. Are you following me here? He asked them to take an inventory. So there are moments and seasons of your life when you must take an inventory of your life. And this includes asking questions, for example where where am i where am i going how do i measure where i'm going with where i am where, where i am right now if i am going there are the things i'm doing here now are they enhancing my journey and where i'm going those are the questions you ask yourself the kind of family that i want am i paying the price to ensure that I have that kind of family the kind of wife I want am I making investment in the area of loving her like the scripture says 
the kind of husband I want? Am I making deliberate effort to submit? Like the Bible says, I should submit. Isn't it interesting that the Bible never said women should die for their husband? He said men should die. Like Christ died for the church. And the reason I was thinking about it, why God didn't bother about asking wives to die for their husband is they are already dead. They are already dead when he took your name and said, I leave my family. I come into your family. You see, but the problem begins when she goes back to her family at the expense of her husband. There's a problem there. Now, she's already dead, but now she's trying to wake up. And every time she tries to wake up, there will be a problem because that is not the order of God. She's already dead. Wife, submit to your husband that he stay dead. Stay dead. You, nobody force you to say, I do. Why should I do become I don't? Or I don't want again. Or I did not. It was a mistake in doing let me look for a lady beside you. You've got to stay dead. Dead, 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 dead. Every time you try to wake up, there will be a problem. You look at your husband and say, what's your problem? God, other men are doing this. You are, oh, come on, stay dead. But the man, did not die when they were saying I do they didn't die they were so alive as long as I care if, if he doesn't have the fear of God right there where well, he's saying I do if a girl passes say, wow 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 look at that babe there the guy is not dying so God says in order for you to be an effective husband you got to die so if you die then the two of you are dead Two dead bodies don't fight. Two dead bodies don't go into strife. I will not talk to him. I will not talk to her. We shall see. Die, somebody. Die. You will take ah, you will know where I come from. Die, die, die. And singles who are here start learning how to die and stay dead. Being dead does not mean you are you are inferior to him it means you are wise it doesn't mean you are stupid it means you have discretion people who try to rise up they lose their husband they lose their crown and mostly stay unmarried for life so if you have a husband appreciate it venerate him like the amplifier says praise him why marry a man you can't praise why marry a man you can't say i love you too then why did you marry what's what's your business all women in the house say amen and all the men you are too alive die don't you know i am the head of this house go and die We don't know that you are dead of the house until you die. As long as we are saying it, we don't know. Pastor, pastor, he just don't respect me as the head of the house. Die to become the head. 
He looked at you and said, I am warning you. You don't ever in your life. We are just acting fit. Go and die. Let me look for a man around you. Go die, man. <laughs> ah, Pastor, I will show that girl. I will tell her that in my family, we are not bastards. Go and die. It doesn't work. But that's not my message today. So, in verse 40, the Bible says, And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. There is something about sitting down. Life offers you nothing until you learn the way to sit down with God and understand that jumping around does not translate into success. That there must be a time that you consistently sit down. No phones, no social media, nothing. You're just sitting down, cultivating the presence of God. He said, when you learn to sit down like that, things will happen to you in the hundreds and in the fifties. Are you following me here? Jesus came, died, rose up, went back. What do you think he went to do? He went to sit. He didn't stand up one day and say, ah, God, this thing is too intense. Let me go back the second time. Let me go and die. I think the death I died is not enough. No, he went down to sit. Everything is finished. So if everything, everything is finished and done and you have the victory, why can't you sit down? Because the Bible says we are seated with him. You don't read your Bible, you are not sitting down. Scripture challenge, we posted it, you turn it to social media challenge. WhatsApp challenge. You scroll through. What's our scripture challenge for today? Oh, Leviticus 5. Ah, that Leviticus is somehow. It's Levitica. If it's, if it's Matthew now, I will read. Every scream at your neighbor, sit down. Amplified version of Mark 6 40 says they threw themselves down in ranks of hundreds and fifties with the regularity of an arrangement of beds of herbs looking like so many garden plots. See, there's something about order. Jesus said, Before I can perform any miracle here, any miracle of multiplication, I need to see you in an orderly manner, like an arrangement of beds. So you arrange your life. I mean, there's a time when you study the Bible. Your alarm is set to that time. And after a while, you don't need an alarm. Your body becomes the alarm. There's a time you, you worship in. There's a time you fast during the week. You arrange your life in order, like an arrangement of beds. Not chaotic. You read your Bible once in a week. Chaotic. Jesus said, I, I can't do, I can't perform any multiplication in this chaotic crowd kind of stuff. I, I don't need crowd rushing at me. I need you to sit. Sit down. Sit down. And organize your life and destiny. Have a time when you pray. When you have a time you pray, say for example, 5 a.m. every morning, do you know God? will keep an appointment with you after a while after a while you don't need any alarm to wake you up you just wake and when you go to that place where you pray maybe a corner in your room or a particular uh, reading room or library or prayer room as soon as you enter that place you sense God's presence because God is not coming he's actually waiting for you there because he loves that appointment loves it he wants it he wants worship he doesn't want disorganization he doesn't want you worshiping him while you are brushing your teeth you're wasting your time that's chaotic there's no regularity there there's no arrangement 
God doesn't want your life scattered, disordered. Pay tight today, pay next month, and then you come and say it's not working. Like an arrangement. Have some order into your life. Are you with me? What happens when there's brokenness? Oh, glory to God. Genesis chapter 7 verse 11. Let's quickly see what happens when there's brokenness. Brokenness is you coming to that place in God where you humble yourself. You look at your life in a sincere manner. You look at the things that are not supposed to be there. And you, and you ask for mercy and say, Lord, take these things out. I don't want these things. I mean, you are sincere with yourself. There's no deception. You're not trying to play anke panke with God. You're just straight with God. That's what you call brokenness. It's a place where you submit all to God. You say, Lord, I can't do anything without you. I just need you right now. I, 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 I submit my life. I submit my life my purposes my intents my desires to your will whatever you want is what i want that's what you call brokenness in genesis chapter 7 verse 11 in the 600th year of noah's life in the second month the 17th day of the month the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up come on say broken up the, the, the moment there was a breaking up of the great deep, the next thing was that the windows of heaven are opened. Without brokenness, the windows of heaven will not open. You want the heavens to be open over your life? Be broken. Be broken. And there, there's no brokenness without sincerity. You have to be sincere with God. You know, David messed up. He was not being sincere. So he got to a time. Prophet Nathan came. And then he now broke down. That's the point of sincerity. That's brokenness. He began to cry. He said, Lord, check me. If there be any evil thing in me, please wash me clean. Oh, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me. He was at that point. He got broken. All the while, when he took Bathsheba, impregnated Bathsheba, killed Uriah, was, you know, he wasn't broken so there's a there's a place you are and you can be going through the motions and you are not broken the conscience is said you do all the bad stuff and you don't feel guilty about it you tell lies you do all kind of stuff you do things that you know deep down they are wrong and you don't feel any guilt you're not broken today God is sending prophet Nathan to you they're talking to you in parables so come to that place of brokenness and say lord i surrender i surrender without brokenness the heavens cannot open psalm 34 verse 18 psalm 34 verse 18 it says the lord is nigh unto them that are of what I can hear you broken heart God is near them and save it such as be of a contrite spirit in other words God that's number two God is right where the broken are if you are looking for God check those who are broken is there because brokenness is total submission unto the Lord. Total submission. When you let go of your flesh, of your habits, of those things that are, that are not helping your life, you just, you just say, God, I'm going to pay this price. That's brokenness. God is there. Everywhere a heart is broken, you will see the power of God move. When you see a choir leader comes to lead a song here, yeah, if he or she is broken, you will know. Nobody will tell you. Something will move in your spirit. Deep will connect with the deep. When you see somebody who is not broken come to sing, you also know. 
even the unbelievers will know they may not know it's the anointing but they will know that it's just entertainment because they are used to entertainment so they are, they are easily to quickly know what entertainment is entertainment is different from ministry are you following me here in the amplified version of psalm 34 verse 18 the lord is close to those who have a broken heart and he saves such as are crushed with sorrow for sin and are humbling and thoroughly penitent i mean it's a place where you go to and say lord this particular terrible habit of mine god take it away i don't want it. i don't want to perish help me lord take this thing away from my life i don't want to miss you i want to experience the fullness of your blessing know that at the slightest provocation you drop god like hot potatoes and you are back into that habit you are not broken when you are broken you just die to the flesh mortify ye the deeds of the flesh mortify is the language of the mortuary mortification that is take the flesh to the mortuary let it be embalmed no movement no life no pornography again doesn't appeal again masturbation ah lost mm? stealing mm? is a place of brokenness people of god if you are going to get into the fullness of what god asks for you you have to be broken you have to be broken you have to be broken number three god attends to brokenness he's not just close to those who are broken he attends to them he pays attention to them in the in the book of psalm chapter 51 and verse 17 the sacrifices of god are what a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. And this was the proclamation of David after Prophet Nathan came to him. He said, God, I know you. I know you. Once I am broken, it's like a sacrifice unto you. It's like a sweet-smelling savour that rises up to you. And when you smell it, you will attend to me. God doesn't like stubborn people. But stubborn people are not broken. They have a stance. This is the way I want my things done. There's nothing pastor can say to move me. It's your destiny that will move. It doesn't affect God. Neither does it affect me. But I'm particular about you. Because you are my assignment you have to understand how this thing works you gotta be broken stop playing stop playing games with your life be broken be broken and you will see the power of god like never before be broken you will see the manifestation the expression of god's presence in your life you will see victories you will see battles won effortlessly you will see finances aggregated in your life See, because brokenness will translate into oil of favor in the realm of the spirit. Men will love you. They will give unto you. You're broken. People who are broken in the realm of the spirit, they are powerful. People who are stubborn and arrogant and heady and proud, they are weak. He resisted the proud. That's God. Another word is he opposes those who are proud. So rather than for God to attend, now God attends to the broken, he opposes the proud. Say you, I will show you. Pharaoh was proud and God opposed him. You know how God opposed him? He hardened his heart the more. You want to see my power? I'm going to show you. In the message translation of Psalm 51 verse 17, it says, I learned God worship 
when my pride was shattered until pride is shattered you cannot understand true god worship worship is to be learned in the place of worshiping not on internet you don't learn how to pray by studying prayer book you learn how to pray by praying you learn how to worship by worshiping and so you say you learn god worship when pride is shattered and then he goes on to say heart shattered lives ready for love they don't for a moment escape god's notice from tonight i declare you will not escape god's notice in the name of jesus number four the broken are never discarded or left alone never god never leaves them alone in matthew chapter 15 and verse 37 they did all eat and they were filled but they took up the broken meat that was left i thought broken meat should be left alone god said no 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 every broken meat take them up and arrange them back into the basket 12 basket the scripture says enough for his disciples to take home the broken are never discarded the broken are never thrown into the rubbish see in our logic that's what i was saying about the, the, the these things are not are not logically discerned they are spiritually discerned in terms of logic broken things you throw away in the realm of the spirit broken things god brings them attends to them because brokenness shows humility not being broken shows pride and god doesn't want you proud what do you have that you are proud do you have do you have up to 500 million dollars in your account they took up god will take you up Amen. number five you cannot be used of god unless you are broken you can't you can't you want god to use you be broken stop playing games with your life and destiny if you have issues with loss confront it tarry in the presence of god if you have issue with telling lies confront it if you have issue with stealing come any habit you know you have issue with, confront it you cannot be used of god unless you are broken in acts chapter 27 and verse 35 acts 27 25 he says and when he had thus spoken he took bread and give me a little bit of volume on this monitor just a little he took bread and gave thanks to god in the presence of them all listen and when he had broken it he began to eat until the bread was broken it couldn't be used as a meal our lives are more or less like meals that god uses to serve his words to the people are you following me here very quickly number six you can only be broken if you are thankful if you are not a thankful person you cannot be broken in first corinthians 11 24 when he had given thanks he break it thanksgiving comes before being broken are you with me here i said are you with me here now let me show you something here give me mark chapter 6 and verse 41 quickly verse 41 so I begin a roundup it says and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes 
He looked up to heaven and did what? I can hear you. And what? Shout it loud. And what? And then he break the laws, isn't it? He blessed. He break. I thought the order should be he broke and then he blessed. Isn't it interesting that you are already blessed and then you need to be broken in order for that blessing to be expressed and fully manifested? Because now he blessed the bread, but the bread could not be served until it was broken. Your destiny can be served. Your gifting can be served until you are broken, even though you are blessed. So God called Moses, blessed him, then sent him to be broken for 40 years. He learned stuff in Egypt for 40 years he unlearned everything for another 40 years then at the age of 80 he's now ready to be served he blessed he broke what about Joseph had dreams as a teenager parents taking a bow he was anointed for it but then, brokenness. From having these lofty dreams, he became proud. Because he kept on telling his father, kept on telling his brothers, and they told him, shut up. But the Bible says, yet he dreamed yet another dream. So the anointing was on him. He was blessed. But he has a careless mouth. And God said, I can't use you with this mouth. God will be broken to the pit to Potiphar's house to the prison he almost think let a peace cause in his life pit Potiphar's house prison but there's palace remaining glory to God for years that guy went through what I call brokenness how can you have a dream of your siblings taking a bow for you and then they sold you into slavery it takes a broken heart not to be offended at God I say God if you ever give me one more dream how do I know he was broken prisoners came to him and they told him their dream he said hey anything dream I don't want to hear his dream that brought me here he interpreted their dreams he was a broken man and while he was interpreting the dreams one of them will be instrumental two years later oh God tap your neighbor you've got to be broken you are too you are too statue you are like a be broken you are shy see where where you've got to be like the pottery in the hands of the potter and God will rumple everything and scatter everything to remove all the impurities and impediments and then start to roll it again and then it feels oh there's strife here again and it brings everything down again hey, why, why, why are my finances going up and down it's because your pride is going up and down why 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 all my mates all my be broken every time you refuse to be broken you slow yourself down ah you slow yourself down you see young people rise above you if you are not careful that will not be your portion in jesus name you have to be broken stubborn people hey! they don't get anywhere with their arrogance when, when they were finally at the age of 75 they will now stay humble i look and see this thing is not working they will not start writing book wisdom for coming generation 
after they have suffered and have not fulfilled their destiny all the things they are supposed to do arrogance and stubbornness did not allow them they refused to be broken God wanted to serve them to 5,000 people but they remained alone in the kid little boy's hands because they refused to be broken refused to be broken Samson was blessed. He refused to be broken. He died in the midst of his days. He died. Perished. With all his blessing and the anointing. What about David? Anointed as a teenager. Then Saul started chasing him about. I mean, you, you kill Boko Haram for the country. And then the president said, I must kill you now. Ah. How did you deliver all of Israel from Goliath? Goliath threatened Israel for 40 days. Nobody could talk. David came, killed him. Then Saul started chasing him about. And the one who killed Goliath was now hiding in caves. And running about. God wanted to break him because God saw the tendencies of David that I want to be lost to their adultery. Oh, I rather could die. I just break here. And several years later, the side where our guy refused to be broken showed up. And so God said, Another round of brokenness. So his son chased him off his throne. Absalom, little boy. David that fought over 66 wars and lost none he was a field marshal in his days. He ran from his son. Took his men and said, Eja, David, run from people. Run from, ah, no. See? Because there's an area of his life he refused to submit. I need to round up. How is brokenness achieved? Proverbs 3.20. Can you give me quickly? That's the last scripture we're seeing. How is brokenness achieved? It's achieved by the word of God. He said by his knowledge, the depths, the depths of the issues you have, the depths of your habits, the depths of those things that have kept you down, they will be broken by the knowledge of the word of God. And the moment they are broken, he said the clouds will drop down the deal. In other words, if I can take my time to obey everything I see in this world, I will be broken. By his knowledge. This is why we ask you to read Bible, no scripture challenge. The more you know, the more you remain broken. Oh, the reason I'm not going to fornicate with anybody or sleep with somebody is not because I don't feel like it's because I remain broken. Brokenness is what keeps you standing. Brokenness is the place you must get to for your destiny to come alive. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you have any area of your life that needs to be broken, come and kneel by the altar and pray. Just come and pray. Need any area of your life that needs some brokenness, just pray in the Holy Ghost. If you are here this morning, and you have not given your life to Jesus, I would like to present us an opportunity to do so. It is the greatest decision you will ever take in your life. If you are making that decision this morning, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I declare you died for my sin. You rose up on a third day. From today, I'm a new creature. All things have passed away. 
all things have become new in Jesus' name. Congratulations if you prayed that prayer. Welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to God's kingdom. Please kindly leave a comment or send us a message on any of our social media handles so that we can send you the relevant materials. God bless you. This message is brought to you by Dunamis and Sophia No, and powered by the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, Shouts of Grace Center, and Kisses and Hugs Club, an online ministry to singles and married couples. Connect with us on Instagram at Pastor Dunamis, at Pastor Sophia Bola, at Shouts of Grace Center, at KC underscore global, on Facebook at KC Global. Dunamis Tunde Noa on MixLR at KHC Global. Visit our website www.kissesandhooks.com via our mail at kscpartners at gmail.com. God bless you.